discounts, giving you the best long-term savings over three years. Search Electric Ireland Price Check and see how much you're saving. Because being with Electric Ireland is smart, staying with us long-term is smarter. Electric Ireland, that's smarter living. Conditions apply. Estimated annual bill is €1,673. Year 1 discounts excluded. Dual fuel, direct debit and online billing. Residential customers only. See comparison at electricireland.ie forward slash price check. Based on rates at October 1st, 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live from University Concert Hall Limerick for the latest Off the Ball Roadshow in association with Heineken Rugby Club. Featuring Brian O'Driscoll, Keith Wood, and the last time he was on, he brought Storm Ophelia with him. Tonight, he's kindly brought Storm Callum. It's Ronan O'Gara. But first, would you please give it up for Rugby Hall of Famer Brian O'Driscoll and 2018 Sports Broadcaster of the Year, runner-up, it's Nathan Murphy! Good evening! Hello, hello! Wow! <laughs> Good evening! How are we? I think you'll find Jack Nicholas finished runner-up in 19 major and is still the best golfer <laughs> of all time. So it's, it's okay to come second sometimes. It's, it's You've just got fine. lots more majors ahead of you exactly. too. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to University Concert Hall Limerick. How are we? Yeah. What about Leinster legend Brian O'Driscoll? Yeah. It's what about Irish legend Brian O'Driscoll? It is a considerably better reception than I've received down here on many an occasion, so I will take never, it if it's never, going. Never, never, never. Well, at least our Leinster legend turned up, because our Munster legend, Ronan O'Gara, yet again, Un is a no-show. We, we, we shouldn't be shocked. He has turned into the biggest flake of all time. I actually heard, he, I think he had a Nixer in Mallow on the way up here, so... <laughs> Cash! You know, yeah, 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 yeah. We hear he's Brand in Mitchellstown, and he's going to be here in the next half hour. Last time it was Storm Ophelia, this time it's Storm Callum. He and will be here. And he's listening, so yes, Raj, I did call you a flake. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any messages for Ronan O'Gara travelling up? <laughs> hurry up, hurry up is the main one. So we're really looking forward to talking to Ronan, because obviously post-retirement life for Ronan has been pretty interesting. He went to France, he was successful. He's now gone down to the Crusaders, yet more success. So we really want to get into coaching and whether or not he may return at some stage to Limerick and to he, Ireland. He, he, he's fast becoming one of the hottest tickets in town from a coaching perspective. And he's done it such a clever way by going away to France. Now he's gone down getting the experience in New Zealand. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, I haven't seen him for a while. So I'm looking forward to asking about, about what life is like in Christchurch. Pretty happening down there, I think. Yeah, you might go pay a visit, yeah. Way. Go on, you have a few stories. No, um, I think the last I saw, he was facing time, FaceTime me. His family had gone back to France, and he'd moved in with an Irish family in their <laughs> digs. So in a little granny you know, flat. He saved me a few quid. Wow. Of course, you've got a slightly different path. You know, you're doing a bit of media work, just a just a little bit. I'm doing a bit of media work. But generally, yeah. you know, you're a stay-at-home kind of guy. You've got your routine. You I know, am. I'm things are going brilliant for Amy at the moment. You're sort of taking a, a backseat. Isn't you? Everyone enjoy did, it last night. Did you enjoy it last night? Oh yeah. Um, but you yes. know, you're doing the routine, the stay-at-home dad, very modern man. Exactly, 21st century father. Yeah. You do get um, out the odd time though. Must be I said. get the uh, the occasional oh, round of golf. Oh, the occasional. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bill Murray. Yeah, Bill wow. Murray. Wow. Cool that was that? the quietest Bill Murray was for the whole 18 holes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's last week, the Alfred Dunhill Lynx Championship. That's two weeks ago, though, at the Ryder Cup. Yeah. There's a definite pattern emerging here of your stay-at-home dad lifestyle. I'm just wondering when... include a lot of golf. I'm wondering when it's okay to start wearing that free kit again. <laughs> like that's Samuel L. Jackson. Was, yeah, it's Samuel L. Jackson. Um, he came over to me at one stage on about the fourth or fifth tee and actually leant on my shoulder. I was like, that's Samuel L. Jackson. I just, <laughs> I just wanted him to say, what the fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get him to? He didn't, he didn't. Ah, but um, we, had, we had a good laugh and they were, uh, they were good fun. And uh, I hit a few wild ones, as you can see. That was four left. Um, so, but good crack. Of course, you, you're limited to golf, don't you? What's that? Do you limit it to golf? It's yeah. Oh, only, only bit of tennis with Tim Henman the odd time? <laughs> <laughs> Is that 
that's yeah. actually golf as well. But that is um, golf yeah, and tennis yeah, combined. That's yeah. some life. He's he's a wickedly good golfer. He's a scratch golfer. Wow. So yeah. Um, so so o O'Gara's working pretty hard. Like he's at the Crusaders, <laughs> arguably the best club team in the world. So he's, he's working pretty hard, but he's still late. Mm. So we need a punishment. Like, is there a punishment fitting for arriving half an hour late? When you think back to your Lions tours, is there something? We, is there a forfeit we can make him do when he arrives there? No, he is listening. Maybe we can. Maybe do you know around. what? Maybe we can get him to explain his nickname, Lefty. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna kill me. He is gonna kill me. We are most definitely getting to that. We are very lucky though, because when we think of those lions kangaroo courts, there's only really one judge that matters, and he's here tonight. Keep on! <laughs> We leave this for Lefty? <laughs> is, uh, you, you're the more experienced us, broadcasting professional. Is, is Lefty something we should be putting out on, on News Talk? No. Or should we keep it for the no. uh, no. off-air stuff afterwards? Yes. Uh, I think we leave all that to Brian, and he can suffer <laughs> the consequences of that one, which is no harm. We should mention we are here tonight with thanks to Heineken Rugby Club, and if you fancy strutting out on the pitch alongside the captains or maybe taking part in a stadium tour or tossing the coin before kickoff, sign up to heinekenrugbyclub.com where you could win a whole host of money can't buy experiences. Good to have you here, lads. Good to so be here. So we're going to talk to Ronan when he does get here about New Zealand, New Zealand rugby culture, and compar comparisons to what he left when he left Munster. When you look at Munster now, Keith, with a... South African coach, players from all four provinces, a lot of players coming in from outside. Do you, do you still think the same culture is there that was there through the 80s, 90s, that was there winning Heineken Cups? Strangely, I do, actually. I think it kind of, um, it didn't lose its way. It just didn't have success for a period of time. And I think if you look back at the... Um, I've got a little bit of Kaylee music. That's very interesting. Did the ID music. Don't there do it, that, Was that always in there? I never knew... Um, <laughs> But uh, that's very lack of professionalism from us, <laughs> just getting distracted wow, by Diddly Idly. <laughs> but the, um, you know, there was a period of time, uh, you know, when, when Raj was there and Foley and Pauly and all those where they were winning trophies. They had world-class players, but the world-class players were from Munster. And there a couple of others as well. But that was, an un that was a really unusual confluence of players in at one time. And I think... It's very hard to kind of replicate that very quickly, and Leinster have done unbelievably well with that in the last in the last ten years and in their school system. But Munster haven't quite got to that level of depth, so there are changes, and there has been a bit of a revamp of the academy system over the last number of years. And I think we'll see it. It might take another year or two, um, and we start seeing a few more coming in. And I know that there are more changes that are happening in that situation because the system that Leinster have, if you go for the straight comparative is they have a full steady line of players that are coming in that are very close to the level required very early. So they have a bit of a jump on us. So Munster need to rectify that. But um, I still think the attitude is incredibly good. And at the time, we're having to take players from other places, and we'd mm -hmm. rather have them from Munster, and I think everybody would rather have them from Munster. But make certain that we have it in this period of time that we're still up at the top table and make that change going forward. And I, th I think... I think the attitude is very similar. I just think some of the players aren't from Munster, and that's a difficulty, but it's something that we can hope to change over the next few years. Yeah, I agree. I think the culture hasn't changed at all. I just, being brutally honest, I think the calibre of player is not what it was during <coughs> the great years, during the Heineken Cup successes, and even the years that they weren't winning but getting to semi-finals and finals, if not every year, every mm. other year. Um, and it's, you know, those sorts of groups of players come once in a generation. You, you, you know? think that's a sort of freak thing rather uh, than you look O'Gara at that, and O'Connell are born of yeah, Munster you, and everything you, that was about for the last 30 you years? You look at that pack, you know, the, the, the pack. And, he, you, know, you know, Woody was played in that 2001 final, 2000, the Northampton 2000 yeah. final. But, but I think even the pack that came a little bit later on that won, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with, with, you know, Hayes and Flad and Hooker and Marcus, who'd been a seasoned prop with Ireland at that stage, Dunners and Pauly, Leamy, Axel, Quinney, Wally, all b vying for, you know, for a spot in the back row. Like, that's, that's an international pack. Mm. And, um, and to get that group of players together for, for a good seven, eight years, uh, you know, uh, 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 when their age profile was all at the right, 
at the right point, you know, a nice bit of experience in their, you know, at 23, 24, carried them through into their 30s. So I, I just think uh, you look at the Munster team of the last five years and I suppose you tip your cap to the side that's managed to get into the Champions Cup or the Heineken Cup as, as it is again now, semi-final the last two years. You might have looked at that side on paper and thought, they're not a team that you would expect to make to a semi-final, but I think that is based on culture and belief in what's gone before in previously in the Munster jerseys that's gotten them there. I think to go and win them and get to finals, you just need that extra little bit of talent, and it's starting to come through. I think if you look back at the quarterfinal in Thoman Park and you say how different was that from those great days of 10 or 15 years ago, there was no difference. You know, that's the... the atmosphere inside in the ground was it was ludicrous you know it was really um monster didn't weren't going to win it weren't in a position to win it and you could just see there was a well of support that started again and we'd seen it so often in thoman park before and suddenly and i remember you know <laughs> just losing it for that period of time for for the conway try it was it was extraordinary, and, and so I think that that attitude still is there, and I would, I'd be fair, I think the, the level of quality um, at times has dipped, as in that constant quality, but um, the attitude of the players is the same, and um, in Van Graan, they have a guy who, um, who doesn't want to be here for the short term, he wants to be here for the long term, so he wants to see how this can, can be built to a level of proper success. And for a huge number of the teams that play in Europe, what Munster have done in the last couple of years would, would say this is the height of success for, the, for those clubs. It isn't for Munster. Munster have a level of expectation that they have silverware at the end of the season. If that ever changed, it would be bloody awful because they have to expect to win. <laughs> and Johan van Graan obviously comes in as a new coach almost a year ago now and, and has a huge amount of ideas and wants to put his own stamp. But do you get the sense that he, he has that balance and understanding of, of what did go before and what was successful before and what, what needs to stay within the heart of that dressing room? More than most, I would say, in terms of coaches. I did. The first time I met him, um, I shook his hand. I said, it was really good to meet him. He said, we've met before. I said, I have a good memory. We haven't, actually. He said, I was the ball boy in Loftus Fairsfield. <laughs> so when the Munster coach is 10 or 12 years younger than me, it's a bit upsetting, you know. But um, he, um, he is an absolute, all the great coaches that we see at the moment, you know, and there's a change from when I played. And, um, and I remember talking to Brian about this when Joe Schmidt came in, that his idea to detail and trying to be in control of every little thing that he possibly could was was just in stark difference to what he'd seen previously, and I'd never seen anything like it. Van Graan is the same level. He is a pure detail guy. Uh, he will live and breathe by, you know, by working whatever hour in the day he can to try and make certain everything is right. He came into the middle of Munster, uh, Munster in the middle of last season. That's a very difficult situation to do. Um, I think he did really well. I think the guys reacted to him very well. And sometimes that doesn't work, as you know, as we saw in Connacht last year. A new coach comes in at the start of the year, mm. and nothing gels at all, and he's gone in a year. Um, nothing like that has happened with Van Gran. There's been a reaction that this is a guy who will work every minute of the day to try and make it work for them. Players respond to that; the other coaches do. So I do think he has uh, an ability that he wants to be part of the monster story, and I love that. It's it isn't as if it's just for him. This is his time. In, in Munster, he wants to deliver for it. And like he'll never be happy unless there's trophies in the cabinet, yeah. which is what you want from your coach. And it's not as simple, I guess, as following what Leinster and Joe Schmidt did in terms of creating a, suddenly a culture of excellence in Leinster that maybe Czech has started, Schmidt continued and continues with this endless conveyor belt of talent coming through. I guess Munster can't just look to copy that. They need to try and somehow do their own thing. But I, I think he's inherited a, a squad that's very different than that one that Michael Cheka inherited. You know, we were, we were all over the shop. We were in bad shape. We were talented, but we didn't really understand work ethic and everything that went with being a successful team. I think Munster clicked that way more, way earlier than we did. And, and as a result, they found themselves um, you know, very professional, probably 2003, 2004, whereas I think it probably, the penny took another couple of years for us to really 
connect with that in Leinster and, and, and our success came a little bit later. But I think the squad that Van Graan has, inher has inherited is, is still a pretty good squad. And, and what I do really like about the, this Munster team this year, and particularly off the back of last week's performance, I think two players have made a huge difference to, the, to, to their side. And it's nothing to do with them being both from, both from <laughs> my old province. <laughs> One, one's come from from um, from Cantor or from from Auckland, and one has come via the Scarlets. Um, but I think Joey Carberry and Tygburn have given scope for changing the way Munster play the game and evol evolve their game plan. That Van Grant clearly wants to play. You know, in the years gone by, it was very much forward dominated with a, a big focus on a really good kicking game, and Rog was one of the best in mm. the world at that. But then, with the ability to be able to attack when you got, you know, got in behind, whereas now it's very much a 15 man, um, you know, everyone a ball handler. The quality of passing has really improved, I think, in all the provinces, but I think it's been really noticeable across um, particularly the front five in Munster uh, this year in the games that they've been very good against Ulster. They ripped them apart and they looked like the All Blacks at times. Uh, but the, the issue is, you know, when it's not going well for you, that you don't have a really bad one. And they've had a couple of them this season. Away but from home. I think, yeah, away from home. But I think last week, last week's game was an incredible match. I didn't see it live. I, I watched it a couple of days ago, and it was, um, it was exactly what both teams will need going into Europe this weekend. You know, there's lots of talk about, do you want a hard game before that? Of course you do. You, d you don't want a soft touch because you need to be, you know, the body to be hardened and you want a tough test because Europe is completely a different step up from Pro 14. How long does it take for this to become Joey Carberry's team? Or do you want it to be Joey Carberry's team? Because I've seen some of the analysts this week saying, oh, it'll probably be March, April, even after the Six Nations by the time he's firmly established himself. In a way, like you're Conor Murray and you're at his stage of his career and you've only won one Celtic League seven, eight years ago. Like that's another wasted season if it takes five, six months for Joey Carberry to have the impact they want. It's not just about Joey Carberry and we can, you know, the second we get into the media, we can always go and it could have been Joey against Johnny or whatever it was. Um, the games never work along that fashion. We have to be careful about not making it about one person that comes into it. Uh, he has to integrate within Munster. Munster has to integrate with him. Uh, what I've seen in the last number of weeks, and I was delighted he was picked again, because there is a sense of confidence that comes to a guy. I think his handling as a 10 is without peer in the country. I think he is a better handler than Johnny. I think he's better hands. Um, he's not a better player than Johnny, not by a long stretch. But what he does have is... Uh, an ability to, to trust his hands to do things that are on the gain line that are very, very tough. And He's an instinctive player, yeah. I think way more so. Johnny's become more instinctive, but I think jo Joey just plays heads up. And he's so reactive, and I think it's 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 very exciting as a centre to play outside that, but there's an, a big element of the unknown, because I don't think Joey Carberry doesn't really know what he's doing, but he, he's got such incredible footwork and such great vision that he can get himself out of a spot way more with his athletic ability and his, and his intellect than lots of other 10s. Is there I think anyone that's you've what played with at 10 apart. that you could compare? Jeremy Staunton years ago um, was a bit like that. Um, he was, but he was, he was more difficult to play with because you really, you know, at least with, with Joey, I, I think he, he ha he's another level where he can, he can spot something and then make a decisive um, play in, the, in a split second where I don't think Jeremy quite had that ability. Um, and it's, it's, it's what Joey needs to do is he needs to ha be able to control different components of his game. So that part of his game we know he, he has, but when, it, when a game's going against you, when you need to get a momentum swing in your favor from nudging the corner, he did some good stuff at the weekend, mm. to be able to do that, the way Raj controlled games, but, but the way he kept his pack going forward, like that has such a, a, a huge positive impact. On a, on a forward pack. I remember I played with, with Jeremy in 99 or 2000 when he played against Connacht, and um, I'd never, I hadn't seen him. I'd seen him in training, but he wasn't getting much of a run. He got picked, and I played with him in, in that game. We beat Connacht by 50-odd points, and I had never played with an out-half that played like he had. It was absolutely amazing. And he had the, the most extraordinary talent and never seemed to get a run of games at a high enough and hard enough level to, um, to be able to make that kind of part and parcel of it, because I would get it, because he would, he would do different things, because he normally had time 
when he was playing at a lower level, you don't have any time. And that's what I, the difference with Joey is he seems to have time even when there's none. Um, what I liked about the last couple of weeks is when he got the ball and he was moving the ball wide, this beautiful, crisp, tight pass, the next player was doing the same. It's bloody infectious. If you get thrown a bucket of rubbish, you throw rubbish on. When you get this beautiful <laughs> ball, and suddenly there's another 15 meter pass, suddenly Munster, we were complaining about the lack of width. My God, you've width in two passes, because this is what the guys are training with all the time. But what I, what it isn't, and again, it's not just about Joey. He comes in, he's now the guy in the jersey. The other players that are playing 10 just have to get their act together. They have to get their chance. They have to out-train Joey every time training is on. They have to raise their standards. So it isn't just about Joey, because we always know the old saying, you're only ever an injury away. So the standard of the players have to raise to get it. It's the same with Albi um, uh, Mathewson. Um, none of the players thought they were going to usurp Connor because um, there's no th way they were going to. The golf was too high. Um, but uh, Albi comes in, and his standard is very different, and it's much closer to Connors than the guys ever were. They have to improve their standard if they want to be number two or number three in Munster now. And that's been a really good selection. But So when you have good players coming in, the other guys have to raise their game. I would say some of the difference for Munster now is when we're looking at the really teams that are hitting the mark in, in Europe, uh, in the Heineken Cup. The teams that are doing it are the ones with the, the long tail, with the big depth on the bench and the big depth off the bench. I don't think Munster have that. And I think when they have their best team out on the field, Munster are a match for 99% of teams in, in the Heineken. If they don't, they can struggle. And that's one of the issues. Yeah, because even looking at it there with some of the names, if they were all fit, if you had a team that included Scannell, Byrne, O'Mahony, Stander, Murray, Carberry, Farrell, Conway, Earls, suddenly that's a team that can actually beat pretty much everyone in Europe. Unfortunately, the chances of getting all of those players on the pitch at the same time are probably pretty slim. That's and then it is back to that question of like Leinster being able to leave out three or four internationals for the squad for this weekend's game. That's professional rugby, and, and, and that's why big squad Saracens had uh, you know, won back-to-back -back Champions Cups because they've got, they had a great squad. Uh, Toulon, likewise, before them, and, and Leinster more, more, uh, most recently. Um, but, you know, I think the addition of players like Mike Haley as well has been a great addition. You know, obviously would have been very disappointed to have seen Zeebs moving on, and, and he seems to be killing it over in, um, in, in Racing as well. But Mike Haley's come in, I think, done extremely well and settled in very well. And so when you do have your, 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 um, your whole squad to choose from, I think they can be very potent. But... You know, as the season goes on, when you get to the business end of the season, you're going to pick up injuries. And are those replacements able to come in and do mm. the same job? Not quite yet, I don't think. And that's why it's just that next step to get from quarterfinal, semifinal, final that I think they're maybe not quite there yet. The exciting part is Carberry, though, and what he could become. Because like, you mentioned maybe parts of his game that we haven't seen yet. That like he's played four games at out half for Munster this year. He played one game at out half full 80 minutes for Leinster last year. Like, it's remarkable how little rugby he's played at 10. We don't quite know how quickly he can actually learn on the job that give him 20 games at Munster, this guy actually could refine all these things that maybe still need to be worked on. Is, is that the part for Munster? Is that the X factor? Um, yeah, I th I, look, I think he's... I think he's the best movement going into the tackle. His feet are fantastic. I just want to see him play more. I'd want him to be on the field no matter what team we have playing. And I, I thought there was a bit of a dip a couple of years ago with, with Rob Kearney. He did a few injuries. It was taking a while to come back in. I thought Leinster looked an awful lot stronger team when he was playing at 15 as a second playmaker when Johnny was under huge pressure. Um, Kearney has done exactly what I was saying mm. the other ones have to do. He brought his game back to the level where he had to. And he was playing injured, which makes it very tough. But he's a player you want to see on the field. I don't care where he plays half the time. Joey's going to create chances. You know he's going to create chances. And if you can get other people turning up. And I think there's a big onus and, and responsibility on the likes of, of Haley and, and Keith Earls as a senior player this year to get in and be that second receiver and do exactly what Carberry was doing for Johnny Sexton when he was playing at fullback, of getting in at first receiver. Because when Earlsy gets on the ball, things happen. You know he breaks tackles. You know he gets in behind the fences. You know he gets offloads away. So I think there's a big onus, particularly with Zebo gone, 
that he has to really step up to the plate and be that, that, that second playmaker as well and, and make things happen. Because there's no doubt when you've got that caliber of player with, with that level of X factor, when they can make things happen, you just have to then convert. Mm. Because against the good sides, you won't get lots of conversion opportunities. You might get two, but you've got to make two happen. And you've got to score four, you know, 10 or 14 points off the back of them. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's, I think Joey is an incredibly exciting player. And even from a Leinster perspective, to see him thriving now in Munster, I think it's, you know, it, it bodes well for Ireland. But um, you know, everyone wants competitiveness in the, in the provincial derbies as well. I just when you when you talk X Factor, I still get a bit of a shock almost of uh, the improvement in uh, Keith Earls over the last couple of years. He'd had a load of injuries. He bulked up a bit because he thought that was needed. He then sheds a bit of that down again, and he is just—I mean, the, the uh, sudden the pulse of energy that goes around Thoman Park that went around the Aviva last week, and I actually think it's from Leinster fans as much as Munster fans. The guy is electric. Um, he's a guy you can hang your hat on. I love the fact that he now he's he's older, he's wiser, he's got the experience, but he's got the confidence to go out and say, yeah, that's not good enough, or yeah, that is good enough, or he's a, an older brother to a load of the players. And the reaction of everybody, mm. even apart from Limerick's hurlers, the reaction of everybody is for excellence. You know, it's been pretty cool. So I, um, and that's why I'd say it's not just about Joey, and we can't ever let that be the situation. It has to be about the other players that we have. So. And I guess, I guess they need that maturity from Earls as well, particularly if Murray is missing from that back line. And maybe it's very difficult for a winger to have a real leadership role. You think of Leinster and the work they've done with Henshaw and that they're doing now at Ringrose to try and turn them into real vocal leaders with Nasewa gone. They is it's attitude. Yeah, but leadership's not about you know what you say most of the, most of the time. It's about how you carry yourself, how you how you behave off the off the pitch, you know the extras that you're doing at training, because uh, you know one thing that I learned as a senior player or even as a as a young player is you you always have eyes on as a young academy player you always have eyes on the senior players to see what way they behave and maybe to a degree when I came in it was to the to my detriment because we weren't as professional as we should have been and. And you, thought that, and you thought that that was, that was the way you were meant to behave and the way you were meant to carry on and, and the, the work rate you were meant to do. And without naming names, you know, <laughs> until, 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 until we... Go on. I, just, I was just going to say, I, I never dyed my hair blonde. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's shaved down there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, he did set you up for the, uh, the obvious comeback there. Uh, Ronan O'Gara, we hear, is five minutes away. Is that with O'Gara, is that a he st he five stopped, minutes? He stopped for a Coke and a packet of crisps in the petrol station. <laughs> so we'll get him on as soon as he comes in, we'll get him up on stage. But, uh, so uh, looking ahead to this weekend, and the way you're talking about Munster, there are positives to come down the line, but they go to Exeter this weekend, and we've Matt Williams on last night's show saying they need at least a losing bonus point, and he feels that's going to be a hell of a task for them. Like that's what they're up against this weekend. Like where do you see this season right now, starting out in the Heineken Cup campaign, that they're going to go? I, I think Exeter are, are primed to compete for Europe now. Um, they've been consistently good for the last five years. They've been in three premiership finals. They've won one. And, Just one um, uh, European quarterfinal, though. And one European quarterfinal where Jimmy Goppert, you know, beat them with a kick in injury time, um, you know, probably against the run of play. So they, they, um, they're consistently a phenomenal side to watch home, home and away. And, and I think that is the, that's the secret in Europe, when you go away from home. And, and what will be a huge test is in this corresponding fixture in January, when they come to Thoman Park, what they need. They'll know how many points do they need, a victory, a losing bonus point or whatever. So I think that'll be really interesting, but it's a massive test for Munster this weekend. There's not many more difficult places to go and play in Europe than Sandy Park these days. And Leinster probably had one of their performances of the season last year when they went there and, and managed to, to win by what was it, three or four points. So I think it'll be, it'll be tough for Munster. And a losing bonus point, I don't think they would be, I, I, I don't think they'd be devastated. How does that mentality and attitude work? Say we're talking about a losing bonus point. Is, is that they're, mentioned in the dressing room? They're, they're not talking about it. And 
Um, what they're probably talking about is if, if we are in a bad position, this is what we have to do to try and get to that one point, and they'd have an eye on that. They have to go with a view of winning, which is the only reason you turn up and put a jersey on in the first place. Um, Exeter are one of those cracking teams that have built uh, a short history incredibly well um, while keeping everything intact, keeping their, their ethos intact. They're the only um, profit-making rugby club in the UK. You really love what they're about. Yeah, they just, I, I, I love it. I, I just, um, they're trying to get the best out of some people who are local, some people who haven't really struck gold elsewhere, maybe a little bit difficult, or maybe haven't had a coach that has kind of understood how, uh, how to maximise their ability. They seem to get the most out of a group of players who are not all stars, and th I think they maximise it. So uh, for, s for a place like Munster, yeah, we'd appreciate that a lot. You know, we would respect the fact that that's how they do it. And the best way to show respect is to try and beat them at mm. home. So, um, I, look, I, I think a, a losing bonus point would be, um, would be good, um, but I wouldn't be looking for it. You know, you have to try and push it up to the highest level. I haven't seen um, Monster's team, and I know there's a couple of doubts and injuries and elements in that. I have to say, when Monster are playing poorly away from home, which we, we are, um, we need as close to a full team as we possibly can. And if we don't have a full team, we want the guys who are fitting into those positions to not make mistakes and to play a simple game. If they haven't been in the team for, uh, you know, in the main big games, they just need to function. They don't need to try and be a star. And, uh, and I think that's something we really need to do. We need to protect those players and try and make it as awkward as possible. But it's a horrendous place to play. So I think it's tough, like really tough. I want more things than I'm wishing for, maybe. Mm. That trophy over there then, do you see anybody but Leinster lifting it next May? Yeah, I, I think there's a couple of teams, definitely. I think Saracens are back in the mix and, and Exeter. I think Racing, you know, having gotten to a final and recruited well, um, are back in form this season. I think they've got a nice balance uh, to their team. Still not fully sure about Finn Russell at 10. Is he a European Cup winning 10? I just, I'm not entirely sure whether there's enough tightness to his game to actually close out the really tough ones, the, the ones that are super close at semi-final and final level. But I think those four teams, for me, have the best chance of, of getting to semi-finals and finals. But there's always an opportunity. You know, with, with the Thoman f uh, Park factor, you know, Munster will always be difficult to, mm. to beat there. Can they pick up a victory on the road against Gloucester and Cast? Yes, they can. So can they qualify for sure? If you get a home quarter final, Thoman Park, no one wants to pick up that. And then all of a sudden, similarly to the last two years, they found themselves in semi-finals. And so you, you're, you're only one game away from, from lifting a trophy thereafter. So th there's lots of aspects that, that, can, that can come into it. But I do think you're looking at probably a previous winner um, picking it up again. From a Leinster point of view, going back to back is an incredibly difficult thing to do. Is it purely a mental thing? Like you look at some of the younger players and that, like James Ryan, who life couldn't have been any better. If there are setbacks, like is that the one question mark as to how they respond if there are some difficult days, or have they already at, answered them? You can them? look at it a couple of ways. Are they are they stronger off the back of of you know the experience that James Ryan and Jordan Larmer and Andrew Porter have picked up last from last year? They've um, you know, James Ryan had this crazy year of not losing a domestic um, game throughout the season or a European game throughout the season. So um, they only know one way. And I think the way you have to look on it when you're, you know, in, in your attempts to retain a trophy is that it's handed back and you have to earn the right to win it again. And you know, don't think about the final in Newcastle in, in May. You, you think about how can we be a little bit better than we were last year just to stay ahead of the curve because I think they were the best team in, in Europe. Um, Racing could have beaten them in the final on another, on another day. They weren't at their best in that final, but I think consistently Leinster were the best team in, in Europe and that's why they're, they're back there, there again. They've shown well this, this season and they look as though they've improved again and that strength and depth is, is something that you, you will need in Europe and, and I don't think there's that many teams with, with that quality of the players not getting in the 23. Reese Ruddock's not making the 23 this weekend. Um, Scott, Far Fardy. Scott Fardy is on, on, is on the bench, Sean O'Brien is on the bench, so there's not many teams have the luxury of leaving that calibre of player out of the starting 15 and I think that's ultimately what 
differentiates teams when it gets to the business end of the season. We are going to get your thoughts, Keith, before the end of the show on who you think is going to win the Heineken Champions Cup. But before we go to a break, everybody here, I think you've been using the hashtag OTBHRC. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Well, we've got a couple of free pints to give out. If you look up at our social wall, we've got the first couple of them. Moggy Lillis. I'd absolutely bait the head off a pint of Heineken while we're waiting for Raj. Yeah. We've been waiting so long, you might have had more than one at this stage. Moggy Lillis, if that's your real name, you're going to get yourself a pint. And Jermud Noonan, ready to go, add off the ball, rugby, O'Gara Wooden, some bod fella, should be all right. Should be better than all right. You get your free pint as well, Jermud. Ron O'Gara is going to be here next. We are here with thanks to Heineken Rugby Club fans. Get more out of the game. Exclusive member-only events just like this one and tickets to the Heineken Champions Cup games. Join today at HeinekenRugbyClub.com. Off the ball. On News Talk. Every Friday on the Moncrief Show, we do movies. And we do booze. This week we'll be sampling some delectable wines, as well as looking at what's new on the big screen, including Rosie and First Man. Neil, if this flight is successful, you'll go down in history. What kind of thoughts do you have about that? We're planning on the flight being successful. Sure, what else would you want on a Friday? Movies and Booze on Moncrief. Brought to you by Lidl's award-winning wine range. This and every Friday on News Talk. When you want to stay somewhere Don't sit on the fence You'll stay in a travel lodge when you hear the evidence Great rooms, big, big bags, locations This place has it all And for such amazing value That's Travelogical Visit Travelodge.ie That sound you almost don't notice anymore is coming from a vehicle weighing 30 tonnes. That's roughly the same as six fully grown African elephants. It could crush and kill you in an instant. Don't say you didn't see it coming. Last year, vehicles were the single biggest cause of death and injury in the workplace. As a business owner or manager, you're responsible. For advice on managing vehicle safety in your workplace, visit vehiclesatwork.ie. A message from the Health and Safety Authority. First man to walk on the moon. It'll be a hell of a ride. First Man has critics rating. Three. Five stars. It's a blockbuster that's out of this world. Two. It's an extraordinary cinematic achievement. One. It will take your breath away. Good luck. From the director of La La Land, Ryan Gosling. We have serious problems. We've got this under control. Claire Foy. You don't have anything under control. It's the best movie of the year. Do you think you're coming back? First Man. In Cinemas Friday. Certificate 12A. The Republic of Ireland take on Denmark and Wales in the UEFA Nations League on October 13th and 16th at the Aviva. Secure your seat with an FAI season ticket, including entry to special events, exclusive promotions and competitions. It's time to get mad serious. It's time to get your FAI season ticket. Get yours now at FAIseasontickets.ie. I was just me, but now there's a you inside of me, which makes us two, me and you. I've given up nights out for now. I've taken up yoga, it hurts. And I'm getting the flu vaccine, which may sting, but flu can cause serious illness or death. So I'll be our lifesaver. I will protect you and me. You just keep on swimming. The flu vaccine is a lifesaver for pregnant mothers. Ask your GP, pharmacist, or visit hse.ie. O is for October and for other. Those other mobile phone stores that can't match the awesome deals this October at Carphone Warehouse. Get a free Samsung S9 with a free Samsung Tab A 10.1 all when you switch to Vodafone, Ireland's number one network, but only with Carphone Warehouse. Not to mention all the other brilliant offers and expert advice from the home of the networks. Any network, any price.
Make your home all it can be. Your home, your Casey's. Fast nationwide delivery from Casey's.ie. Upgrade your home to a Ferco home and experience the highest level of styling, craftsmanship and security. I'm Jim Toll from Ferco Windows and Doors. Our handmade lifestyle range has no weak points, are independently certified as impossible to break into and come with energy-saving eco-glass as standard. See ferco.ie. It all looks better through a Ferco window. The Ball. This is News Talk. Hey, welcome back, University Concert Hall Limerick. How are we? We are here tonight with thanks to Heineken Rugby Club to get member-only benefits such as Heineken Champions Cup tickets, event invites, discount codes and much more. Just join HeinekenRugbyClub.com right now. We have the rather beautiful Heineken Champions Cup behind us. I think it may well be coming back to Limerick in May. Yeah. Unlike Adrian Barry who said a horrible thing during that ad break. It's time to get him out. He always did like to leave it late. Give it up for Ronan O'Gara. Yeah. Listen to it all. <laughs> Quite a serious show. S some uh, really good content. <laughs> does, it, does it go up or down now, Raj? Uh, we'll have a bit of crack now, I think, will we? <laughs> so, Lefty. <laughs> he, has, he, he has about. Well, he has a lot of stories over a 20-year period that he could have told, but this one is... <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a great story. It's just... I struggled very badly with my left foot for a long time. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> it's the parental guidance version. No parental guidance needed. Go on, go for it. Are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> The only thing is, <laughs> there are new rules that's up tonight. There are new rules going forward. <laughs> oh, no! Come <laughs> on, Raj. Not a chance am I telling this story. <laughs> Will this be for the on. next story? Move, let's move on. <laughs> Do you know what it is? No, he doesn't. <laughs> it's, I know he probably does, but he, uh, <laughs> he, he won't tell it either. The only fellow... Who'll tell it would be Claw potentially. <laughs> uh, uh, thankfully, he's on time out after New York. <laughs> no, I mean, he's. He's. How was New York? Back home. It was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's. Uh, we had. The 2008 team had three days. Or people may, may, or may not be aware, we had three days in uh, New York uh, with a lot of Irish Americans making. A lot of money for hopefully the uh, academy system in Munster, and uh, we had a lot of liquid lunches and a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. We had Fede Pucciarello coming in from Argentina, just a global game of rugby. You know, Doug Howlett is obviously the main man in Munster now, one of them, and uh, an impressive speaker. And then we had fellas like David Wallace who knows how to enjoy himself, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> with Barry Murphy for music, and we had Galov, we had Claude, Marcus, Donnick. Which Donica. Ronald O'Gara was present? Ah, uh, the coach. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, <it> was. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> As I was room with Quinny, and Quinny said to me, "Geez, we haven't seen Christy Brown for a few days." <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was, uh, I was, I was on top of things. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there is a little synopsis of the last <laughs> few weeks. Is that the first time you've been together as a group since '08? First time I've been out since OH. <laughs> 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 uh, it's um, I just it's the first September and October, like in 23 years I've had off, and I think with the lads here it's great to be able to kind of reassess and see what you're doing and where you're going. So um, yeah, I was at the Ryder Cup, the Arctic Three on for Aces. I was at New York with the boys, and it's just uh, 
I think that's when you're retired, what's the great thing about it, it's medals are really important, but the more you push on, it's kind of who are the fellas you can't get to the bar with quick enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're now living the Brian O'Driscoll life for these couple yeah, of months. Yeah, it was quite accurate, your description on the way up, I liked it. Full-time golfer, just the ambassador everybody wants, and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Myself, my, what, my, myself and Woody played in a golf tournament during the, during the, um, the summer where it was Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere ex-players. But we were just talking about, I haven't seen him since then, we were talking about what unbelievable crack it was and we've got a WhatsApp group that, um, that is still going strong. Although Woody just informed me that he doesn't do WhatsApp. No, I'm not a, I'm not a social media but person. That's not but social media. <laughs> <laughs> just been friendly. It, <laughs> I was going to finish my sentence. <laughs> it, it, actually, it actually is. Well, it's... It's technically. But, but, we, but it, was, it was back to the good old days of being, being involved in a team and the wildness of, of um, ex-rugby players 15 years on. Um, so I, I kind of know what, what um, Lefty, I mean, they're, Raj is saying. They're about, a different level about again, get, Those get-togethers again, they are a different level of fun. And, um, hey, and you, you should do them was, more often. It was amazing because there were guys we played against, played with, uh, different ages, different groups, up to um, uh, Gareth Edwards uh, played in the golf as well. And the crack, and it was just juvenile fun for about four days. It was, it was, it was fantastic because um, we didn't have to do anything. We had to go and play golf. It was a series of nine hole games. Uh, you had to play, you had to sit down, you chat to the guys. There was, you didn't have to do anything else. There was no uh, commercial or corporate thing that you had to do. You just, and it just was, it was really good fun. It was great to see guys that you'd never, like we, Stuart Hogg um, played. So he was the only present player. And after about a day, he said, I'm, I'm going to have to retire <laughs> early. He said, you guys have the best life of all time. <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was, it was great crack. But I think the guard is down from when you were playing, you know, your, your ad adversaries. And then I think it, it takes a year or two of retirement. And then I've gotten to know, you know players that I played against way more than I ever did when I was playing. Because of just after match functions, you're all kind of, it's all a bit stiff. You're kind of, you, you head off to your hotel, you're prepared for the next game. So it's an opportunity to properly get to know one another and have a laugh together. And we're all the same. We just come from different countries. Do you think the current players are going to have that in 20 years time or? I hope so. Does it I change hope so. so I, I think it's, I hope it's going to be it's the same and different. I think it's so professional now and there's no, very little opportunity for them to socialize with one another. As we used to have big banquets years ago and it was win or lose or on the booze and, um, and maybe that was, that was part of the problem of why we weren't that successful, that we weren't as focused as other teams were. Um, but now, like after internationals now, they're, they're, they're doing the, uh, the function, you know, an hour and a half after you know, the final whistle, they're on a plane that night and they're already thinking about the next game. Whereas, you know, I, 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 hope there, I hope there is a chance for them to be able to, when they switch off and when they do yeah. retire, that they enjoy one another's company. Do your players at Crusaders know the other Ronan O'Gara, the side of uh, Ronan O'Gara that goes off no, to New York and has a good time for three days? Yeah, they saw that when we won it. Yeah, there's an, uh, the Irish bar in Christchurch is hopping. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had three days of whiskey, which is important if you win. Uh, but uh, what is certain with the new, I suppose, generation, they won't ever experience a gallop and a claw. And I think fellas like us are really appreciative for having that, I think. Um, just a little story. So we met, I think, on Sunday night in the Malden Hotel flying out at 6 a.m. on Monday morning to New York. So, um, you know, I mean, there was a few stragglers on the WhatsApp, kind of, we'll meet in the bar Sunday night. So I got in late and I just made sure I didn't just eyes on the floor, get to the bedroom as quickly as possible. You're up at six. So I got to the next morning and then you get to br breakfast in the airport and it was like a cup of coffee. The fella might have a bit of cereal or fruit salad and then so the normal fellas, then you look 50 meters down, you see like uh, two fellas arm in arm with others with pints. <laughs> 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 it's just, <laughs> and uh, it just, uh, it's, it, I'm very appreciative for having that, you know what I mean? I think the game has so moved on, but like the, there wouldn't be a night, um, 
when you left the Clarion for a European Cup weekend where you wouldn't be in tears listening to, you know, I mean, what Golov had to say. Like, for in terms of leadership and stuff, it's probably underappreciated as Irish people, but that was incredible. And then, you know, I mean, obviously, it's something in this country that we're very lucky to have because we just passed on to Woody then, obviously, and to Polly, to Brian. It's, uh, I think we're at uh, a different level in terms of the leaders we produce. And was that always on a common theme? So when you talk of Golly of speaking the night before, and I'm sure there's a bit of fun and a few jokes in there all the time as well, but is it always a, the common theme of, of where you're from and what it means? Or? Yeah, it was, and I think that was um, something that you'd never forget. I think the, the genuine connection between the Munster people and that Munster team. You know, I think we, we it started probably, it only probably started in the semi-final in Toulouse in that yeah. semi-final when we, we weren't expected to win. And then... I just think probably there was pints and baguettes in the airport on the way home. <laughs> and little things like that, I think, when you're ex genuinely accessible and there was kind of like a bit of a free-for-all sing-song, which is important too, because I think the public and the people like to access their players, and uh, that is very important uh, to a point. And obviously it's got more and more professional, and it just nowadays it's hard for that obviously to exist. From, from that game, the flights were delayed. Do you remember when we were coming back and everybody was queuing for pints and baguettes? So it was, there was no separation. So it was fan, front row forward, you know, <laughs> you know, and it was coach, you know, it was literally, it, everybody was piled in together. Everything was delayed. So it was kind of, yeah, and, uh, it, was, it was mad uh, because it, that changed, of course, afterwards. But that was, an, there was a great journey in that in 99, 2000, there was something, was something the a bit game different. Sometimes has yeah. probably changed so much, but you look at some of the rugby played in that game too, it hasn't changed at all. Yeah. In terms of like, you're playing the ball over the tackle, teams are all on about that, you know what I mean? Everything is about the rock nowadays, but th some of the scores, Munster scored that day. What? You scored a couple, I think. Well, I got you? a poxy one at the end. <laughs> 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 Actually, my favourite try of that game was John Hayes. Um, because he, he carried the ball into contact. It took him <laughs> at least 90 seconds to get no, off the ground. Come on. And when, he got, when he stood up, someone popped him the ball. He fell over the line for a try. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, was that his only try? Didn't I it? think 33 seconds to yeah. fair all rest at the same time. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, he's a fucking fair lump to move. <laughs> It's interesting you said that you can go back to the turn of the century in those games and, and still a lot of the philosophy still applies for rugby. Like when you go over to Crusaders and probably the most successful club team in the world and you're looking to bring something different, like you're going over there, you're the first non-Kiwi coach with the Crusaders, so they obviously see something in you. Are you going back in time? Are you telling them, the players, those stories of Munster? Like are they relevant no, to... Uh, to be fair, they're... They watch a lot of Northern Hemisphere rugby. They're very in tune. There's a lot of copy and paste goes on in rugby that you kind of are only becoming aware of now, you know. So if you see a good move that, for example, Saracens or Leinster or Exeter or, or you know what I mean, even um, any team play, it's kind of, yeah, I like to look at that. We'll rep that and you just put a different name on it. So they're essentially, <laughs> our, uh, well, that's what power plays are nowadays, you know. Like there's, you can do an awful lot with, five-man line, it was just changing personnel. You look at Ireland's try against, um, it, yeah, you know what I mean, what, what Ty Furlong is doing there and the timing of that is, it, it, it's brilliant in its detail and it's brilliant in the fact that you have Ty doing that, but to be fair, I, I, it'd be interesting the player camp for, the, if I suppose, the first to third rep to see that that go, go right the first or second or third time he did it, you know, but that's, what you, why you rep things for, um, but it helps if you have a bit of a freak at right head and <laughs> Bondiaki and a hit line and it goes out the back, you know? Well, so, so when you go to New Zealand initially, obviously I don't know what, what the, the process of being brought in as a coach, obviously you'd worked with Dan Carter and I'm sure word had filtered back about your coaching style and that. When you go in, you know, do you go in with nervousness into an in a new environment? Do you go in fully accepted by players or do you have to win them over? Or no, how does I it work down there? Because we hold them on, it's such, yeah. on such high esteem. Should we? And that's a big learning too, I think. If you look at it now, there was, we were coached at national level by coaches that potentially didn't get out to see what world class is. So 
I felt playing them that they were probably sometimes better than th what the reality is, which it's only by going down there that you, you know that. So now I probably have a fair gauge of what's needed or what's required and what the teams I'd be involved with need, you know. So, um, now Brian's point, it's interesting in that regard. I think I got a lot of confidence in coaching Dan, Anthony Tutavaki, Casey, Rocco Coco, so four All Blacks in a racing team because, like, essentially, I was learning on the job there too. I lot, I, as you know, I, like, I watch a lot of rugby, so I like it. And, but, kind of came up with a few ideas, but, like, my guinea pigs are, are the, the racing first team, and unless there's buy-in, you've no chance. So, it, the massive thing in Crusaders is, is connecting and caring, so that's, the f you know I mean, the detail comes after that, so you have to connect with every single player, but it, it's really easy to connect, I think, if, um, if the guy has a good attitude, and that's what they're big on down there, attitude. What do you mean by caring? Caring, so we have an environment where we really care. So, for example, and I was got out to see a few other environments, and um, for anyone, I think, to see what world class is, they could, if they can, they should go to meet Aidan O'Brien, the horse trainer, because that's a guy who cares. That's a guy who's world class. That's a guy who, who uh, has it down to the nth degree and what performance is about. So, uh, that's a big thing for him is caring. So, you, like, essentially, and it's a strength of what's been passed on from the likes of Woody to Monster teams, the, the, our massive difference is we cared. Because if you care, you get up a, cra a half a second, a quarter of a second faster than the opposition. But it doesn't tell 20 times. It'll tell maybe on the 78th minute of a game if you do it consistently multiplied by 15. So the environment that cares, genuinely cares, you can say you care, but do you really care? So how do you measure that? Some things you can't measure. Some things there's no stats for. So, uh, and that's, uh, I think what Brian had as captain, he cared. You know what I mean? He really cared. And that spread into, as you said, I was listening on the way up. It's not what you say. It's how you act, you know? And I think that's what they're good at. They back up their words. But their words are, are concise and they're uh, short. There's no general... Uh, rule of Bula, you know. It's how did that go? Okay, what will we do in this one? Okay. Does that suit you down to the ground? Depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Uh, Where did you get the confidence, Raj, to go to? Uh, I mean, I like I couldn't. I think we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but we didn't kind of cover it a lot. To have the balls to go down to New Zealand where they don't take coaches from other countries and they definitely don't take them from Ireland. To be able to go down there and say, yeah, I put my head in the block. Yeah, I could have gone Because there's a high level of high chance for failure. Yeah, I, I never think about it like that though. And I think now that I've come out probably um, with that first season, the first three, four months were I was completely deconstructed. I thought I knew what coaching was about, but I didn't have a clue. So what I did is I was in the telling mode. So I used to tell players, this is what I want from you. But over there, you don't do it like that. So it took me a while to get around with like that, and I'm not strong on technology, so um, <laughs> my, <coughs> my uh, computer skills are pretty average. You've got WhatsApp, though, so. I've got WhatsApp, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, um, get you 90% of the way, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you just WhatsApp video clips, 10 seconds. You know what I mean? Who puts them on your phone? The critical view. <laughs> <laughs> His brother. <laughs> My 10-year-old. <ten> <laughs> Jess, what do you think of this scrum here on the left? <laughs> <laughs> we show that one, or do you like the way Kratz is on this line here? No, um, so... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, I I, I was um, excited about going down. I think, uh, but that's a little bit of an Irish thing too. Look, look at the quality that that played played in Ireland. You know, I think sometimes it 
it's only when you get out you kind of realize what your reputation is you know mm. so um no it was it was it was um i think it, it was just connecting the detail can come you know but it's it's a it's a little bit of a different game as you uh, as we've discussed mm. you know it's all out attack so for me there was massive growth in how teams defend so like normally what they do in super rugby there could be a scrum 20 meters out from a left hand touch line and um so the defending right winger would have 20 meters of space right to mark but he'd stand 20 meters back so if you have a smart nine the nine will play 9 11 to a fijian who has electric feet <laughs> so like he has 10 meters to go this way 10 meters to go that way so you're kind of like that's not the smartest thing there just come up here a little bit here and if he gets that ball if he gets more than two meters you're in trouble so uh over here um there's been i think huge advances with andy farrell and uh Gustard and uh, a, a lot of good brains and you know I mean Sean Edwards probably started defensively I think from rugby league um, there's probably I think definitely the big shift in rugby is coming on the ball watching man watching uh, just to explain that to people so a lot of people if they're defending will watch who they have while the Irish team or teams over here will watch the ball so I'd be a big fan of watching the ball. The lads over wouldn't have ever done that ever since they were five years of age. So it's a massive shift mentally, but thankfully they bought into it and we got a, a fair bit of return out of it. Um, How difficult to sell is that for you? To, to it would have been to, a really to, hard to sell. Robertson. But, uh, well, he still wasn't really on side. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know what I mean? I had my backs defending like that, so he was... As you know, with secure coaches, he get, lets you do your thing if he believes in you. So th there you go, Raj, that's it. But like, there's a few daggers in the box now or then if, if it didn't work. But that's, that's my problem, isn't it? I've got to deal with that. And then um, it's, it, the reason it gave me confidence is when Rassing won that Bookley in the new camp, uh, that was four years into a project, kind of, and I knew there and then that these guys need a different stimulus. Th th that day of kind of having a system defence where you kind of up and you lose the touchline, it's 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 over. Mm. But we had four days pre-season, and I said I can't implement this because it's a massive mentality shift. And I was sitting there just like dying in my job for four months, gone. I need to get this in there, but. Um, I couldn't, and then uh, I started it the following season, so essentially lost the season, and then first four months, uh, you know I mean, I think when, uh, with, uh, you know I mean, not blowing smoke up his arse, but it's, when someone like Dan Carter, with all he has seen, believes in it hugely, because what do all out halves like? You tell me. The ball, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them don't. <laughs> so I'm <can> pass that way. <laughs> Um, well done, thank you. Space and time, okay? So, it's such an easy game if you have space and time, and it leads into what you said about Joey and, and Out Halves and Johnny, they're really good ones. If you take away their time and space or double mark them, it's brutal. You know what I mean? It's very hard to play against that, but you could say, well, you know what I mean? There's six backs excluding the scrum half, and there's uh, you know what I mean, only four defenders in 10, 12, 13 and winger available. So that's six against four advantage attack every time. For me, it's not. Just don't worry about those two. Did it make it easier for you to implement that having watched, having the All Blacks struggled against the Lions on the, on the, uh, on tour in the summer of 2017 yeah, and right. realized that that's exactly what happened, that their space was shut down. It was like, how do we play against that? So when you're coming along and going, well, I can implement that into your, into your super rugby system, how, you know, what do you think? And we're only that's scratching an easier the surface, sell, right? you know I mean? We're only scratching the surface at the minute in terms of <coughs> where we could potentially get to, but you're exactly right. That, that is, but that's even faves to fend sometimes, isn't it? Where, mm. where that is, but like, uh, you know what I mean? It was even because the, the, I think the game was it, uh, the Crusaders Lions game was it finished something like three points. Crusaders yeah. score. 
which wasn't really mentioned very often in team meetings. <laughs> so, and is that seen as a bit of a humiliation? Uh, of course. I mean, that's as blunt as their attack has ever been. So it means advantage defence. And are the players coming in, the senior players, say somebody like Kieran Reid, are they coming in saying, we need to change, we need no, to respond? No, 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 to be fair, they're not. It's not. It's, it's, it's a purely backs thing. That, like, my role is backs coach, so basically, uh, you know what I mean? I, I was, there were 17 backs, I was, in, I was essentially in charge of, so that took my focus. In terms of the overall picture or the, the global vision, that's Razor's job. And like, you know what I mean? I'm, we, ha we had to be completely aligned. So the getting aligned means that I'm responsible for first phase scrum and line of defense, which meant I could do my system. But other minute it became a phase game, they're back to what they've been doing all along. So it's... Uh, where, where are you now on the coaching ladder? Where do you see yourself? Um, I see myself enjoying myself hmm. um, uh, with a great challenge. I think it's very, uh, like I wouldn't make too much of a distinction between the Munster team I play with and the Crusaders team that I'm currently coaching. I think a lot of the values are very similar and um, I genuinely believe that, you know what I mean, work rate, honesty, um, a lot of... Um, a lot of guys wanting to improve, so. Um, but in terms of your improvement yeah, and your, uh, what you're learning at the moment, where do you? Yeah, I think to get to stage two where the learning is nearly probably uh, not over because you're always learning, but you're kind of you're probably getting a lot more confident. Uh, but then there's a bits of going to go on, like, what area of coaching do you want to do, or do you want to have a look at the global? the vision of it. So I, I, I'm still toying with that. I, I actually love being on the grass. Coaching is very different to managing. So that's what I like at the minute, the detail, as you, as you appreciate when you play, uh, when you're defending as a 13. You know what I mean? It's, it's hugely interesting when you start actually getting into the finer detail of it, even for one play, yeah. never mind for a pool of players. Hold that thought for a sec. Uh, Evan Quigley, if you're out there, uh, you need to go to the door to the left of the stage. Uh, it's good news, I'm told, whatever that means. But Evan Quigley, you need to go to the door to the left of the stage uh, straight away, wherever you are. Over there. Up there. Um, it's a free pint. Seifer's up there. <laughs> I presume we're not interrupting just for a free pint. Uh, <laughs> no. On that then, Ronan, because it's funny, we probably look at what you're doing in New Zealand very much through green tinted glasses or through Munster tinted glasses of you're over there almost on a reconnaissance <coughs> mission, learning, 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 taking everything to eventually bring it back here. Whereas like, you're there in a really important role, like they brought you in to give something. Is it, is it hard to get that balance of I'm here doing a job and coaching every day, but also I'm trying to soak everything up as well and take it all in? Yeah, I think you'd be, you'd be taking it all in as well, but like there's it, it really depends on your environment, I think, how you can apply it. I wouldn't, uh, you know what I mean, be sucking it out of it. I must admit, like, that at the minute, the only focus is the Crusaders. That's, that's what you're doing, Nathan. There's a huge enjoyment in it. And, um, you know what I mean, you sign up for, for another season, but they go like that, you know, and the game is changing. You don't know if there's going to be a global calendar. You don't know where it's going to. So at the minute, that's... that's, that's what you're doing, but I'm hugely, I suppose, uh, stimulated by um, the team environment. I don't know um, when, you know what I mean, you want to have a go at, at head coaching, but um, coaching is, is really interesting to the actual having a specific role in the team at the minute is, is, is um, really satisfying me, I suppose. How do you know when you're ready? Cause I how, how do you know when you're ready to be um, a head coach? I think it would probably just hit you. Same as how do you know when to retire? I didn't really know, but then something just came over me that day when we lost to Claremont. It was just kind of, it was just kind of all of a sudden, just someone said, yeah, it's, just w walk now, get out, you know? But I never felt that before the game, the week of the game. I knew um, when Garrett Mall burnt me on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> 
there was no coming back. Garrett Ball is a good player. <laughs> <laughs> when, who did he play for? <laughs> for the Scarlets. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, and so you're living in... <laughs> <laughs> you're Who's lagging who? I have no idea. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're living in, in New Zealand. What's, what's their perception of us now? So you, you've got yeah, good big, intel big, on that. A big threat for the World Cup. Genuine yeah. threat, yeah. I've obviously left before the Four Nations, so I'd say they're a little bit shook at the minute in terms of um, what has happened with the two games against South Africa. I wouldn't say they were, ex especially not in the cake tin, expecting that result. And like the reality is, it was. It could have been South Africa's. Or two. Yeah, you, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it was heading to a 19-point victory. Mm. And you got a great bounce of a ball for a line out five meters out, you know, which changed everything as well. But um, they, uh, yeah, they like their, they uh, obviously I have the backs a lot, so um, they'd be big fans of Conor Murray, you know. They do like the the guys uh, are admirers of rugby players too, you know. So they're they're actually a try and get Connor's kicking kicking them. Um, Planned for the week and stuff, and in fairness, Connor sends it on to me and stuff as well, you know. <laughs> what? But, what? But that's that's what that's what secure players do. It's the same thing. Is the thing is like, but you can't put Connor Murray into Crusaders jars. It will not yet anyway. <laughs> 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 and get him to box till 2022. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, he's with Munster at least till 2022. <laughs> You're meant to go over there and bring back the good stuff, not give all our good stuff to them. No, he's, uh, there's no way he's gone anywhere. He's monster through and through. Yeah. Um, Do we have too much respect for New Zealand? In the I wouldn't say the them? current players. I think the best thing that happened was getting in Joe Schmidt. I think he genuinely believes he, win, he, he has the, if they prepare and perform, they'll win every game great feeling having a coach like that and I think I don't I think if it came out of someone else's mouth I don't think there would be anywhere near the buy-in that, that there would be from the current group I just think there is uh, I mean it just the way the current players speak about him I was at a, a monster gig on Tuesday night a dinner in London and just the way Connor speaks about Joe Schmidt you just know it's so genuine so that's very powerful I think in a player's head, when it gets to the 72nd minute, is it going to be him or Aaron Smith who's going to crack? I think, uh, well, in, in our day, we had so many occasions, probably six times we were within a score after 70 minutes against New Zealand teams. And, well, the one in Christchurch, it was Nigel Owens who cracked and gave a penalty against us at scrum time. <laughs> uh, we've, I've moved on. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so, <coughs> but <coughs> I just think there's been a, a progression with everything. You look at it for kind of Munster and then Leinster taking it over and driving it to new standards, and then Ireland and this team is, I think they consistently know how to win. And I think um, it has become complicated, I suppose, with Razzie going back to South Africa and doing a good job and selecting whoever he wants. So South Africa will be, will be difficult, but I think... Um, you know what I mean? It's it's without a shadow of a doubt. Um, this Irish team will go there with probably the more most genuine belief than than a previous Irish team. You've been pretty open about your desire someday to come back since you retired and since you got into coaching to come back to Munster, maybe to go and take an Ireland job. I'm just wondering, over the last five years and having gone to France and travelled to New Zealand. Has that changed your worldview of what you can do in coaching? Like even in the last couple of months, you've been linked with jobs in France, you've been linked with a role possibly with England. Even after 2019, Scott Robertson could become the All Blacks coach, there might be a role in the Crusaders. Like have your thoughts of, of what the next 10 years look like changed because of what you've experienced? Yeah, and the biggest challenge is, is, is getting the, the family balance right. You know, I just wish New Zealand was closer to, to, to Ireland because it has all kinds of implications for... Uh, you know, in your family, Jess's parents are, are getting a little bit older, so she likes to be within touching distance, and the reality is it's two bloody days to get home from there. So you can't get home quickly, and um, kids start secondary school in two years' time, so, you know, I don't know, do you want to put them in a school somewhere and then pr 
another three years. So huge decisions in that regard, Nathan, I think. But, um, you know, I was at a, di at a dinner in London on Tuesday night and you saw, I suppose, the highlights reel and highlights reel always look better maybe in reality. But like seeing those moments in red and in green, of course, you'd, if, if it's your home place, you'd love to, you'd love to do well because it, I think you could m potentially rekindle that connection with the supporters and get that fortress going. And uh, you look at the Limerick hurlers this year, like I think there wasn't a... Well, I don't know, was it, I was in Kerry on my own, but I was in tears watching it, kind of going, is there something wrong with me, you know? But <laughs> there's uh, something about... <laughs> <clears throat> I think there's something beautiful about, the, about Irish sport on a day like that, where uh, they come from, obviously they've come from, they know where they're coming from, Limerick, but to an outsider, it was like, this is quite amazing what they've finished off mm. it means more um so um you know i think um <laughs> you you saved me thank you and then, <laughs> come on to fuck will you <laughs> I've heard that a few times before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Go on, ask me a different question, will you, quick? <laughs> <laughs> they said come home to fuck is what uh, JP wanted to, just in case anybody listening on the radio didn't quite get it <laughs> from down the back. Do we automatically apologize for that as well? I don't know. Uh, the the O'Gara O'Connell dream team then, when, when, when's it going to happen? <laughs> no, I'm sure. It's, um, like that's a lot of big ifs in there. Uh, I would obviously enjoy, but Paul is a perfectionist. He's brilliant. Uh, I think uh, outlook on the game. Um, so would it work in my eyes? Yes, of course. You know what I mean. I think um, titles. I think don't don't matter to people that are secure. So as long as you kind of have back yourself. That's why I think. People in, in any walk of life, if they're very good. Um, so when Brian played, he, he had a very open relationship with him, talked to him about stuff because he was very secure in the fact that by telling something, he knew that whoever else was to essentially copy this or get that information couldn't do it as well as he could do it. And there's a great, I think, um, comfort in that. And that's why, you know, I mean, if you've got a laptop here and I can give you all the plays that we play. But it's the small detail that matters in everything. So, you know I mean, you can have all the playbook, you can have whatever you want, but uh, that isn't really th what, what's interesting. It's, it's how you do it and when you do it and how you do it consistently. So, like, there are so many nuances in, in, in a potential strike play that have to be right for it to be effective. So you look at everyone, and Brian would know this better, uh, you know what I mean, doing the, the loop play that Leinster have been doing for years, which I think was started in the, it was the, the, the day in Lansdowne Road when yeah. Australia scored. Yeah. Gordon Hamilton's try that day. Yeah, yeah. It was the first time we've seen that. Oh, really? That play, you know, so. Um, 91, yeah. But like, you mean, if, he won't tell you exactly what the 13 is doing, um, but he knows why it works and how it works because, because it's just there's some crucial thing but a lot of teams try and do this play yeah, and they're I, useless it, at it it is it's funny because so many so many commentators talk about oh the leinster loop play or the ireland loop play and it's you know why can't teams defend it because of the intricacies of it because of the lines of running of players that don't get the ball they're the ones that actually show for it and then good tens are able to pick and choose the pass They've got one or two different options, but it's it, it's simple, but it's complicated at the same time, yeah. and it's and that's why you know lots of teams try and copy plays, but it's usually the original side that's best at it because they've they've honed it down and they've done it so many times. Have you brought the Leinster loop play to Crusaders? Um, floated, but not it, it isn't <laughs> it it isn't ran as well as Leinster run it. 
Why? Uh, because I think uh, Leinster is so far down the track that that play is in existence with Johnny probably for it's over a decade now. Which, you know what I mean, it's, but it was a forte of Darcy's and Brian's as well. You know, I think what the 12 does is really crucial as well. So, um, no, um, we, 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 that can be my work on from tonight, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No problem. So, so what you're saying with yourself and Paulie is titles don't matter, Paulie. Titles don't matter. No, Assistant I, I, coach I, is really good job. You'll have huge influence. No, but sure. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's, um, you can't even make a joke about this. <laughs> <laughs> It would be um, interesting in years to come to work with Polly, yeah, definitely. Have do you, you spoken have, about it? Do you have the Sorry. same rugby philosophies, do you think? I haven't even discussed it, but I would say we have similar hunger and similar... Um, we have enough of common ground. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting question about how you want to play the game as well. Mm. I think the great thing from listening to your discussion about um, y um, on the way in about um, just looking over your shoulder. So the, the Crusaders for years, people forget the Crusaders went from 08 to 17 without a title. Everyone thinks they're the dominant uh, force at Super Rugby, but like from 08 to 17, they didn't have a title. So for years I was talking to, asking them why was that? And it was because it's kind of, it's a little bit of, uh, what happens when your neighbour is excelling? You're looking over your, over your um, lawn to see what he has and what are they doing. So they were always looking at what the All Blacks were doing well or what the Hurricanes were doing well. And then after a while, they just kind of made a kind of very conscious decision as a kind of environment or as the as the rugby group that uh, we have our own strengths and we need to concentrate on them and keep practicing them and still building them. And that's why I think last weekend, from Munster's point of view, was a phenomenal mall and a great scrum, which kind of gets underappreciated. Uh, but like, if you want to win cup games, that's hugely important. And I think that's, as Munster people, that gives you big, big encouragement. So they need to kind of keep that where that is and then just add in other bits, you know? Tony O'Rourke, you also need to go to the uh, left of the <laughs> stage. More good news for you, Tony. I think we're going to be seeing you up on stage for our competition for the end. So, uh, Tony O'Rourke, uh, if you want to go to the side of the stage as well, see is up there, and he'll sort you out. It, like, everybody in this room, there's so much love for yourself. There's so much love for Paul O'Connell. There will be so much pressure, in a way, and expectancy that this is just going to happen, that Joey Carberry will be at the perfect time in his career. Like, that would, be, would that be a big thing for you to have to learn to deal with, or is that something actually that having grown up oh, in this province would be... Tens come into their prime around 30, <laughs> is it? <laughs> okay, so we're talking no, seven years. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't... The stuff about pressure or, it doesn't bother me, you know what I mean? I think uh, there's a great expression that, that, that some of the top uh, sports stars use, that pressure is a privilege. So if you, can't, if you can't handle it, just do something else, you know? So, like, I think... Um, from being around a lot of great leaders in my time, uh, I, I kind of don't look upon it as pressure. It's not pressure at all. It's brilliant. Are either of you surprised with the route Ronan has gone? Um, yeah, like I think, um, surprised? No, because he's, he's smart. And I think st taking a step away from his, his natural environment was a clever thing to do. It gave him a bit of breathing space to be able to learn from people that... and learn brands that he, you know, wouldn't have known as a, as a, as a player because you know, when you're with one club all your career and, you know, play obviously with one nation, um, you tend to play a particular way and you play to your strengths. So you've got to open your mind a little bit to what other um, ways the game can be played. And there's definitely a different style in France. There's a big difference in style in France in club and, you know, they're the country's trying to play that, you know, game from the 80s a little bit more, play you know, a laissez-faire game, then you know, down in, in New Zealand, it's drastically different again. It's a completely different brand of rugby you play then wh when you play against them, particularly in New Zealand. So it's a clever thing to do, to step away. I suppose what, what I'd like to know is, have you been conscious of being careful how quickly you get to the monster job? 
because in reality, you know, the coaching ticket these days, if you're with a club for four or five years, it's quite a long time as a coach mm. these days. Five years, I remember looking back to Michael Cech, it was five years and he did a great job for us, but it was time for him to move on when he moved on. So are you conscious of, you know, there's lots of years left ahead of you of how quickly you get into that Munster role or that Irish role because after, after that, where, where do you go? Do you go to a, you know, it's your club, it's your country, so you have to go somewhere else that you're potentially not going to love that role as much. Yeah, exactly, yeah, you would be aware of that. It's, 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 um, that's exactly it, so it depends, I suppose, what, what road you want to, to go. Do you want to be kind of um, on-field coach, or do you want to be a director of rugby, or do you want to be a head coach? So um, all of those things are, are kind of in your head, but I'm kind of always of the opinion of, of it'll work itself out, you know, I genuinely think that, so I just, uh, I know what I'm doing this season, and then, um, and next season, no, I don't. Do you have an idea of what you want to do? What I'd like to do is different to what Jessica would like to do, so <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> so um you know what I mean, it would be it'd be a great sad life if you're living in an apartment for one, wouldn't it? And mm. travelling around the we world. We don't actually right? usually hear that that side of it. Like people coaches generally don't talk that much about their family and the influence of their family and of actually having to think about that because generally we sort of just see coaches like players just being pretty selfish and doing whatever the hell you want. Yeah, well I've been like that for twenty three years, haven't I? So I need to some would say, why change now? But you can't, you have to be, there's nothing more important than family. And that's, I think, what gives you the, the motivation and the happiness to go and do what your day job is. But it's great to come back to a stable family and, and, and a good environment. But like, um, I got a great, I suppose, uh, challenge out of coaching. It's completely, probably different to what I expected. Um, but it's, it's um, hugely rewarding. I didn't think it would be anywhere near rewarding that I, that I completely underappreciated that side of things. Keith? Yeah, I, was, like, I think there were far easier routes than he could have gone than going to France and then going to New Zealand. You know, there were, um, I think with all the changes that happened in Munster in the last number of years, there would always have been a chance or an opportunity and um, those would have been in there You'd played here your whole life. You'd never played yeah. away from here. And, and to be fair, Woody, I think like going to France was easy because I th retirement is brutal, and I just wanted to. Were you ready to retire? Uh, I was, but like as you know, going to Tormen Park for those three European Cup nights, there's nothing like it in in life. Yeah. Going playing those games, but that's gone. You know what I mean? So it was better for me to just get out of the whole environment as opposed to living in Cork and gone, having to suffer through that. I got out of rugby. I actually couldn't, I couldn't coach. I couldn't I get my head around that as an idea. I could completely understand why. Yeah. Because that's, I think, the hardest part of it. But I, for me, I just wanted a clean break. So like going to France was a, was a kind of more a family decision as opposed to a coaching decision because there isn't huge coach development over there. You develop... I think from the mindsets of a, you know what I mean? You're kind of like in a meeting and you're 18 months as a coach and you have Joe Rocococo asking, asking you, is my positioning here all right, Roger? I'm like, Joe, I, <laughs> 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 I said, if you ever fucking saw me on the wing, <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus, help me out here, Joe. <laughs> and, uh, and he was just so genuine and like so, so humble, such a great guy. I was like, no, he's serious here, like in front of everyone. I was like, <laughs> what did you say? I said, yeah, I'm happy enough with that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, uh, yeah, you know, so like we all see it the game through our own eyes, the position you played in. It's only when you step back a second and you have, you know what I mean, Max Machino or, um, you know, Teddy Thomas asking me stuff like that. It, it, you kind of go, 
these are young kids and they need huge guidance. And the French players get the bad rep. They're crying out for detail. They're crying out for, for direction. Uh, and they train hard. And that's why I think anyone that goes there kind of um, would stick up for the game over there. It has many faults, many faults. I'm not disputing that for a second. But I think if you spend a bit of time there, there's a bit of, I, I wouldn't knock the players. We're getting a lot of texts in, a lot of love for the three lads on the couch. Rog is amazing. Could listen to him all night. Well, for the two hours of a three-hour show that he's bothered to turn up for. <laughs> I missed what they said. <laughs> they said you're amazing. They could listen to you all night for the two hours of a three-hour show that you were meant to turn up for. <laughs> <laughs> Will Rog take over Mayo and end the curse? He's good, but he's That's not that me. good. Hey, 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 no. That's on call for. I can't do it. My Ooh. mum's from Mayo. So you're from oh, Mayo. Really? I'm from Mayo, yeah, yeah. Where's your mum from? Ballina, Bohorn ah, Sop. Yeah. Ah, very good, very good. Well, sure, then you can come and give us a little bit of advice. James Horn is open to all offers. No? I think they're getting in Kieran McDonald, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Proper legend, yeah. Yes, he was. For anyone of our vintage, that fella could kick a ball. So, before we wrap up, you're probably in anniversary season. You're coming to the end of the 10-year anniversaries, I guess. You still have one big one to come, and you're probably just starting out in the 10-year anniversaries, but... Next March, April. Trico you're, you're quick to point out, yeah, he'll be in New York for, for most years going forward. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the checkbook is uh, the message to the businesses, I would imagine. No, no, they're, they, you get a shock off the bar. They look after the Irish Americans. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we do want to talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do want to talk to you because we might see you again before the 10th anniversary of the Grand Slam. We had Martin Johnson on at a road show earlier this year going through Johnny Wilkinson drop goal to win the World Cup in 2003, and he talked to us about that moment. So we have the video. You might, between the two of you, talk us through that play and the, from what, when you've about four minutes, four minutes, 40 seconds left to try and get back in the game against Wales. If you want to look up at the big screen, lads. Look <laughs> to set it up. Ogara has, has now dropped, dropped back into, into the, the pocket. pocket. Wallace in front of him as the protector. I'm just surprised that Marcus Clock wasn't out ticks of the way. To three there? minutes, <laughs> Ireland continue to pick and go. It doesn't, it doesn't get, get more, more intense, intense than this moment. moment. Peter, Peter Stringer, Stringer urging his past, past Marcus, Marcus Horn in particular, in particular to, to get, get up, up and defend. The They've almost, almost nothing, nothing left to give. give. Horn, Horn for David, David Wallace and Wallace is helped by Paddy Wallace. Ireland in position. This, this must be it. it. This, this must, must be, be it for Oran O'Gara. Drop the goal! goal. So the, the key moment is Peter Stringer tapping Marcus Oran on the ass and telling him to get up. Yeah, there was a lot of, a, a lot of moments in that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I think for everything he, he has given rugby, it was great that he actually was on the pitch for that moment. It was a big moment for him, you know, I think for all of us. But it was, um, it, it, I think it was just um, the pleasing thing was behind the posts. It was a very un Irish thing. I think we actually, there was genuine, I think, calmness and belief that we would we would get us an opportunity to score and sometimes you'd kind of be going that isn't going to happen you know um, but there wasn't any panic and for you is that the culmination of eight nine years of putting yourself in pressure moments of the Heineken Cup in 2000 of I've been part of a miracle match where these situations where you had to deliver but is that is that could you have taken that on in your tenth cap, uh, I'll answer. Uh, I, these, there's only a few individuals that absolutely revel in that sort of occasion. That that truly love that pressurized situation. Most people would balk at at the thought that the pressure of a whole country is on them. But I think certain players thrive in that environment. And you know, I, I've played with three or four of them. Johnny Wilkinson was definitely one. 
Um, and I think Johnny's become that player, but Rog led the way with that, where he wanted to be, he wanted to kick that goal from the touchline. He wanted to take the hard penalty. He wanted to, you know, put himself in a position. And what you've got to do there is you've got to fire a shot. If you miss, you miss. But you've got to fire a shot. But you <laughs> if need you to miss, you miss my bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> 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 hell. You, 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 as Claw reminded me in New York, he goes, You fucking langer, you missed all those kicks against Northampton. I got no medal. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't forgiven you either, you cunt. <laughs> 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 Uh, apologies to anybody listening at home. Apologies to anyone listening at home. It's on the radio, no. <laughs> send, send your complaints to the club. What's it's after, it's after, after nine, there. is it? Sorry, Mum. It's five past nine. It's five past nine. It's five past nine. <laughs> Rewind that turkey. Yeah, yeah. It's done. It's too late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take, take two. <laughs> 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 Where were we talking about? So that was a great Rocky moment on. in your career, Ronan. When you look at the podcast, it's grand. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at it there, though, and, like we always wonder about, like, and I think you've, you've said it before, it was almost a uh, sorry, reverse. I didn't say it. I was repeating what Claude said. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all off the hook. Thank God for that. <laughs> oh, I'm having, I'm mixing up his story from New York. About him. It's he fine for you. It's fine for you. You'll be asked back. I'll just never be asked back he again. He recited. Now. No, go on. Go on. What did he recite? I, I don't even want to know what he recited at this stage. No, no. That moment, though, like, is there is there clarity? Are you, are you clear about what you're about to do, about what's at stake, or is it just the game's going at 100 miles an hour as you just need uh, to kick it? Yeah, obviously you're just... You have to just... Uh, <laughs> get them... You have to give yourself <coughs> the best opportunity, um, as, Bri as Brian said, to execute. You know, so there's this... You don't have that knowledge as a 20 year old, a 25 year old, that's what experience is. Experience tells you when I get myself in the same position uh, than I was in a previous time, I'm gonna execute this better. So like the, the challenge there was because we were so near, I kind of just had to get the ball up and down, sorry, down and up very quickly. So, um, it, you know what I mean? It Technically, it's a very poor strike <coughs> because you can't kick through the ball. You just got to get it up as quickly as possible. So that's... <coughs> Simple. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I can't see you with the lights. <laughs> um, but the reality is, Nathan, that's not going back. That's 2009. There was, we had, we didn't know what winning a Grand Slam was, which is extraordinary, really. When do you know? When did you know? When, when did it finally sink in that this is something that 10 years on you're still going to be talking about? Um, well, it took a fair bit of time, I'd say, after the event for me to appreciate it, because for you, it's kind of next game. And, and I think it was, it was just... It isn't the joy of winning it, it would be the absolute uh, humiliation of leaving something behind that you've worked so hard for and let down a lot of guys who have been second in a championship for a number of years. Um, so that would have been, that would have been the, the part that was extremely difficult. It wouldn't have been the claw reminding you of 2000, it would have been O'Driscoll reminding you of 2009. We, just, we still would have won the, the Six Nations, but imagine having to go up and collect the trophy, having just lost the game, having just lost the Grand Slam. Yes, technically we would have been, I think you know, won it, then, but though, that wouldn't have meant anything. Um, similarly to that, I suppose, to that New Zealand game that we threw away in, in the Aviva once there was a draw. Like it, draw, loss, it didn't matter. We, it was mm. about winning the game. So 
Similarly, we wanted, that team had a Grand Slam in them. Should have won it in 07, but we didn't, but that was our, that was our chance. I was, I was sitting in the BBC studio and it was a dead duck of a kick. Yeah. I mean, the ball was kind of going all over the place. And I can tell you that immediately afterwards, and because I'd retired six or seven, whatever, six years, and you're sitting inside and the ball goes over the bar and you're supposed to be composed on the BBC and you're crying, makes it very different. And the very start of that season, we had... Um, um, the very start of that season, I had interviewed uh, uh, Paddy Reid, who'd been a uh, Limerick man, Gary Owen man, who was played in the centre in 1949. Um, and he could still fit into his uh, Irish blazer from 1948, which was just extraordinary. And we'd interviewed him to see what it was. And I, I remember that there seemed to be a sense of that whole year that maybe because of 2007, maybe this was the year. You know, the matches were, were falling in a decent place with England and France at home the other matches away, maybe this was the opportunity for it. And we did a big thing on the BBC about it. But you never believe it until you actually see it. But I would have said for all the guys who played rugby in the intervening 60 odd years that had wanted it, it was pretty awesome. We could see it straight away. You may not have realized it afterwards, but for all the guys who had tried and failed in that period of time, it was pretty amazing to kind of see. Yeah, certainly was. We need to go to ads, but we do have a text in from Mike, who's in Limerick. I'm not sure if he's in the audience, but he says, Rudno Gara's language is a total disgrace. Tell him to cop the hell on. <laughs> That's you, Toll. He made all the effort to get here in time and everything. I'm so enjoying this, I won't let my husband clean the kitchen, is the other text. So listen, it's going down well in certain households. We do need to take a very quick break. We're here with thanks to HeinekenRugbyClub.com. You can get discounts from the like of Grafton Barber, Deliveroo, Captain America's, Heineken Light Tag Rugby, and IMC Cinemas. Sign up and join Heineken Rugby Club today. Give it up for Brian O'Driscoll, for Keith Wooden, for Ron Nogara. More to come. Get the latest News Talk podcasts at Newstalk.com and on the News Talk app. Great news. We've just won that new contract we've been waiting to hear about. It means we'll need to hire new staff. Yeah, and we'll need to purchase new vehicles. Purchase? Why? When they can all drive a Europe car. Whatever you need to drive, from vans to cars, Europe Car can provide the vehicles you want with no capital expenditure, no contract, no ties, and on the road tomorrow. Europe Car. Moving your way. It's time to party, have fun and save big at Harvey Norman. We're celebrating 15 years in Ireland and 15 years of great value and service with a 15th birthday sale. Big birthday savings in store and online across our huge range of bedding. Like up to 50% off Irish made mattresses, up to 40% off headboards and kids bedroom furniture from 59 euro. With so much more to enjoy and explore in store. Celebrate and save with us today. The Harvey Norman 15th birthday sale. Now on. Go! This year in Ireland, over 60,000 people will turn 65. That's an extra 60,000 people who will be eligible for pneumococcal vaccination through the National Immunisation Programme. Pneumococcal disease, or pneumo, can cause death and serious illness. Of those who get pneumo, one in four will get pneumonia, one in four will get meningitis, and one in ten will die. Pneumo vaccination is recommended if you're 65 and over, or if you're in an at-risk group such as people living with diabetes, asthma, or heart disease. Talk to your GP, practice nurse or pharmacist today about pneumo vaccination or visit pneumo.ie. Brought to you by MSD, supported by Age Action, Diabetes Ireland, the Asthma Society of Ireland and Cree. This is a radio ad to tell you that if you're a small business and you go direct to Energia, you get a better deal. That's what we have to say and we wanted to get straight to it. Because it pays to be direct. Call 1850-363-744 or go to energia.ie forward slash business for a direct quote today. Standard terms and conditions apply. With Irish Life Family Protection, you can protect your family's income, not just with life insurance, but also if you can't work through illness or injury. So that's one less thing to worry about. Find out more at irishlife.ie or contact your financial broker or advisor. We know Irish Life. We are Irish Life. Irish Life Assurance PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. The Republic of Ireland take on Denmark and Wales in the UEFA Nations League on October 13th and 16th at the Aviva. Secure your seat with an FAI season ticket, including entry to special events, exclusive promotions and competitions. It's time to get mad serious. It's time to get your FAI season ticket. Get yours now at faiseasontickets.ie. 
Some bus routes in Dublin are now operated by Go Ahead Ireland on behalf of Transport for Ireland. So if you take the 45A, 59, 63 or 75, keep an eye out for the new look buses. On board, it'll be business as usual, with the same fares and TFI Leap Card, free travel pass, Dublin Bus Rambler, monthly and annual tax saver tickets all valid on these services. And what's more, some routes will have enhanced frequency. For more information and to view route timetables, visit transportforireland.ie. With over €2.5 billion Euro in funds under management, 30,000 investors and nearly 50 years in operation, if you're looking for an award-winning fund manager with exceptional customer service, BCP Asset Management may be right for you. For information on BCP's investment range, contact your financial advisor or visit bcp.ie. BCP. Grow your investments. Reduce your risk. BCP Asset Management DAC. Trading as BCP is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. I needed this van in a hurry. Europe Car did the business. Europe Car can provide vehicles with no capital expenditure, no contract, no ties, and on the road tomorrow. Europe Car, moving your way. Ball. This, this is News Talk. All right, all right, all right. We are back and we are live at University Concert Hall in Limerick. Are we good? Now, if you're listening on podcast and you notice a little bit of an edit during the last period, it was just that Keith Wood got a bit of a coughing fit and there was nothing else at all that we had to take out of that conversation. It was all perfectly fine. Nothing happened at all. We are, of course, here with thanks to Heineken from Rugby Club. Ronan's completely forgot what actually happened now, which makes it all totally irrelevant. Uh, we are here with thanks to Heineken Rugby Club. Fans get more out of the game. Exclusive member-only events just like this one and tickets to the Heineken Champions Cup games. Join today at heinekenrugbyclub.com. Right now, though, it is time to give away some deadly prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a question of sport crappy quiz edition with thanks to Heineken Rugby Club. Would you please give it up for your host? He's the love child of David Coleman and Sue Barker. It's Nathan Murphy. Hey. I like the fake cheers. We got there in the end. That was a bit of a shamble. But anyways, we'll move on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome along to the shoutiest segment on Irish radio. It's making a rare appearance in public and probably a final appearance in public, I suspect. It is the scintillating. It is the stupefying. It is the splendido. Question of sport. Heineken Rugby Club. Crappy quiz edition. <laughs> Allow me to welcome tonight's teams. Captaining Team Leinster is a man who was set for the big time after his cameo in Finding Joy was revealed this week. He got his name installed in a star outside his house this week. He asked his barber for the Marlon Brando haircut the other day, and he now walks around Dublin dressed as Iron Man. He's got his heart set on stealing Robert Downey Jr.'s job. Give it up for Brian O'Disco. <laughs> Joining Brian is Team Off the Ball's favourite Athlone native. He was from the Connacht side of Athlone until Leinster won the Heineken Cup in 2009. <laughs> Mysteriously, his address changed the day after that final. It's the OTB bigwig, it's Adrian Barry. Yeah. And joining Brian and Adrian is contestant one. What's your name, where are you from? Evan from Shannon. Evan, I do on the other team. Go on, Evan. Come on, Evan. Uh, well done to you. You won your place because of the story you told us in the Heineken big green chair. Correct? No. We have this all wrong, JP. It is an actual shambles. You won your place because of the comments you sent through to our social wall. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just give him the prize. Evan on, tweeted, accurate. Rod shows up 40 minutes late, dressed like a PE teacher who did a bit of geography every now and again. <laughs> that fair enough? Sorry, Good, good retort, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a silence. His mic is the problem. He is trying to talk over there. Captaining Team Munster tonight is back in the Northern Hemisphere. After a roaring start to life in New Zealand, he's seen all the sights down there. Saw that cave that appeared in the Lord of the Rings, those hills that appeared in the Lord of the Rings, that great big body of water that appeared in Lord of the Rings. Back in his home province, it is Roland, Raj O'Gara. <laughs> Joining Ronan is a man who fought tooth and nail for the out-half jersey at Munster and at Ireland. I'm the best kicker in the Northern Hemisphere, he used to say. To be fair, he's not actually that bad. Wasted as a hooker. Give it up for Keith Woods. And joining Keith and Ronan is Tony O'Rourke. Tony, how are you? Well, I'm Tony. Oh, fantastic, thanks. Where are you yeah. from? Um, 
by club, Gary Owen Rugby Club. Okay. Um, Ooh. Limerick Native. Limerick Native. Limerick Native. All right, fair enough. So you're going to be alongside the two lads, and we're going to get started. There's a lot at stake here. Here is how the format. Oh, we're going to do your big green video. We're going to do your big green okay, video. Okay, so Let's see your big it's uh, green video. 2006, and, uh, and uh, Munster, Munster have a phenomenal, phenomenal team, team that are on their way to win the Heineken Cup. Cup. Uh, uh, semi final stages, stages are playing, playing uh, Leinster, Leinster in, in the Aviva. Aviva. And, and it's an, it's absolute, an absolute sellout, sellout. Top, top to bottom. To bottom. And this, and this guy, guy, local, local guy, guy, trying to trying bring, to bring his, uh, his kid, kid to the game, game and he, he seconds some, some tickets, tickets from, from a connection, connection on, the on the Friday before, before the game, game arrives, arrives into, into uh, uh, the Aviva, and, and points, points that the tickets are up in the nosebleeds. Very disappointing, the young guy can't see the game. So, well, two minutes before kickoff, anyway, he looks down onto the hoarding in the premium section. There's, a, There's a, an, old an old guy sitting, sitting there, there with a, a, a bit vacant, vacant seat, seat beside, beside him. him. Uh, uh, so he so goes down, taps, taps the guy in the shoulder and says, uh, excuse, excuse me, he says, uh, uh, is there anybody using the seat beside you? He says, I know, he says, that's, that's okay, that's, that's free. free. So, so he says, do you mind if I put my son in there? He says, fine. Yeah, walk away. So as the son is getting settled in, he says to the old guy, he says, what's the situation with the seat? He says, oh, he says, it's for my wife. Uh, uh, she, she died, died couldn't, couldn't go to the game. game. He's got us terrible, terrible, you know. He says, would you not have had, uh, uh, would you not have had any relation, maybe a brother or one of the kids, kids that would have taken up the seat? And he says, uh, no, he says, they're all at the funeral. Okay, so it's 2006. Did that actually happen to me? Munster have a phenomenal team. All right, so here's the format of this special edition of the Crappy Quiz. The final stages are playing. Uh, uh, Leinster, Leinster in, in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Tony, we're just quiet. We're trying to get on with this. All right, we are going to eventually, somehow, get to the four rounds involving both trivia and skills, and eventually we'll crown our winner, who will walk away with two tickets to Munster against Gloucester at Thoman Park next weekend. You'll get a pre-match meal, behind-the-scenes stadium tour. You'll also be present for the match day coin. You'll present the match day coin to the referee and both captains in the tunnel for the pre-match cost... Coin toss, I'll get there eventually, but nobody will leave empty handed. Our runner up is going to get a signed rugby ball. <laughs> so there's a lot at stake. Round one, the opposition captain's round, and please, no shouting from the audience. This round is pretty much exactly what it says in the tin. You'll be asked a question about the career of the captain of the opposing team, answer the question correctly, and you'll score one point. The question is for the captains of each team, no conferring allowed. Question one is for you, Brian. When Ronan won the Heineken Cup in 2008, who played scrum half alongside him in the final against Toulouse? Nothing from the crowd? Yeah, it has to be straight. In 08? In 08. Strange 06. Um, must have been Tomas. Correct. <laughs> was, there, was there some noise from the crowd there? Was there some noise from the crowd? Question one for you, Ronan. Yourself and Brian played in the same Lions test match on just one occasion. It was the second test in 2009. Can you tell me who started alongside Brian in the Lions midfield on that day? Jamie Roberts. <laughs> Very good start. High quality. Everything we'd expect. End of water the scores. <laughs> <laughs> One more end, one <laughs> <laughs> Round two, the home and away round. It's time for our home and away round, which involves Adrian and Keith. You can elect whether to answer a question at for home or an away question, with a home question scoring you one point and an away question scoring you two points for the correct answer. Keith, your home question will obviously be about the subject of rugby. Adrian, your home question will obviously be on the subject of Westmead sporting legends. <laughs> Your away questions will both involve sports that wouldn't be considered your respective strengths. So, question two for you, Adrian. Would you like to pick a home or away? No conferring. I mean, the West Mead Make up your is own pretty mind. narrow, so... Uh, go away, yeah. You're going to go away, all right. Oh. Mm. Really? It's a golf question, Adrian. Uh, I'm no conferring, that, yeah. nothing from the audience. In this year's Ryder Cup, who did Rory McIlroy lose to in his Sunday singles match? It 
happened 10 days ago. The most <laughs> famous golfer in the world. Quiet, quiet. This guy runs off the ball. Three, two, one. Oh. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. uh, Justin uh, Thomas. Too late. Justin Thomas. Too late. Too late. Justin Too late. Thomas. Too late. Justin. Oh come uh, on. Too late. Justin cheating? Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> too late. Justin Can Thomas. Can I take the right speed question? Shut up. No, no, you wouldn't have got the right speed question either. Jesus. Question two for you, Keith. Away, please. Oh. All right. Oh, we should have gone home there to drive an ale into them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Also a golf question. Which European golfer won five matches and didn't lose any at this year's Ryder Cup? Molinari. <laughs> Which Molinari? Edwardo. Oh, we're giving a Molinari. Well, Molinari is a Molinari. Francesco Molinari. Yes, right, yeah. Right as his brother. All right. So 2-1 to Team Monster. 3-1. 3 3-1 to Team Monster. Woo! That's why I was asking for the score. 3-1 for Team Monster. Bloody hell. Round three, the rapid fire round. All right. Let's move on to the round that separates the men from the boys, the Rogers from the Podges. It's the no team in particular, ridiculously easy rapid fire round. In this round, you'll be given 30 seconds to answer up to a total of nine rugby-related questions. Each correct answer scores you one point, and the total at the end of this round will be added to your total from all previous rounds. So we are going to start over here with Evan. These questions, just for Evan, no conferring at all. What? No conferring he's only, he's at only all. Or anything. He's only or anything. 19. What were you doing when you were 19? <laughs> we don't expect enough of our youngsters these days. He'll be just fine. Don't worry about him. All right, Evan. Your 30 seconds start now. True or false? Roland O'Garrett is a World Rugby Hall of Famer. True. Where was the 2015 Rugby World Cup held? France. Name Ireland's top try scorer in the 2018 Six Nations. Uh, James Ogdo. Name the Italy head coach. Connor O'Shea. Who scored a pair of tries for Leinster at the Viva against Munster last week? Oh, well, pass, that's one <laughs> Who's been named to referee the Ireland All Blacks game next month? Pass. Which country won the 1995 World Cup? <laughs> Munster's Neil Cronin. I'll start oh, with no, Over. Good luck. <laughs> Munster's <laughs> Neil Cronin. <laughs> We're going to ask the last question, oh, James. No, 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 I started. <laughs> Munster's Neil Cronin plays in which position? Scrum half. Correct. Ah, oh, sure. 36 seconds. Don't worry about it. Five, six. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So five and now six in total. All right, no, Tony, we'll move on to you. Oh, no, Tony, why? Yeah. So you're starting on three points, Tony. Your 30 seconds starts now. True or false? <laughs> 2019 Rugby World Cup total. True. Who won the Champions Cup two years ago? Um, Barcelona. Paul O'Connell is coaching with which French team? Help him more! Help him more! Paul O'Connell is coaching with which French team? We can't hear you. Paul, Paul O'Connell is coaching with which French team? Stade Francais. Who finished second in the 2018 Six Nations? Catch that. Who <laughs> I will ask you again. I can't hear it. Pause. Who finished second in the 2018 Six Nations? <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't know. You don't know. Okay, okay. It was Wales who finished second. So you got two. Uh, and you're up to five. Saracens, not Barcelona, won <laughs> the Champions Cup two years ago. All right. Wow. So, Enda, would I be correct in saying that Tony's team is on five and Evan's team is on six? We have it. All right. I think you just stabilized him there, Raj. <laughs> we do have a round four, and this is the skills challenge. This is for the team captains, Ronan and Brian, you may be wondering what is going on with the tennis court that we have on stage. So 
So Ronan, over your career, you've been involved in many bouts of kick tennis, where you belted the ball downfield, only to have it <laughs> belted straight back. <laughs> We're now going to test yourself and Brian's ability to play kick tennis. As you can see, we've marked out our tennis court on the stage, complete with a net. It's a race to five points, and whoever wins the game will have those five points added to their overall score. The loser of the game gets no points. You can choose to volley the ball over the net or let it bounce. But if you let the ball bounce twice on your side of the net, or you kick the ball into the net, or you kick it outside the lines of the tennis court, you will lose a point and that point is awarded to the opposing team. It's a lot like <laughs> tennis. <laughs> Since Brian's team is in the lead, you're gonna to get to serve first, so throw him over right. that ball there. We will then alternate the serve so until the, uh, somebody reaches. How does he serve? Anywhere. So he can serve to anywhere, anywhere. Hang on one sec. So Drop we're gonna alternate serve it. until someone reaches five points. Everybody understand, yes? We're not going to stand for any John McEnroe, Serena Williams style I'd first Jeez. at all. So, quiet ladies and gentlemen, please. Brian O'Driscoll to serve first. O'Driscoll gets the, oh, Gareth straight into the net. So Why did you fucking slow. let him serve? <laughs> Half volley. <laughs> still my serve. So one nil. Still, no, 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 Ronan, we're going to alternate after everyone. So Ronan gets the serve now. Over on the left-hand side, O'Gara, the weight of Munster behind him. Oh, a header! Is that allowed? Is that allowed? That is allowed! A header from O'Driscoll wins the, the, the point. 2-0. Get back Two behind nil. the line, you cheese. <laughs> Foot fault. <laughs> Foot fault. <laughs> oh. Out. 3-0 O'Driscoll. Wow. <laughs> You're losing right. your touchdown in New Zealand. I All have right. to. You need a comeback. Yeah. Three nil down. A oh. little bit of. What's what? What's been strained? <laughs> Come on, lads. Oh, he's going to the, he's going to the audience for some support. Give hey. your boy some support. Ogawa to serve. Oh, now he feels at home. <laughs> No second serve. <laughs> no second serve. No second serve. It's match point. We're in miracle match territory now, Ronan. Jesus. Silence is... for the kicker. Come on. We're in Limerick. Oh. Oh. A spinner. Five nil. Oh. Wow. An absolute whitewash. Humiliation for Ogara. <laughs> O'Driscoll's oh, getting the ball pelted at him by the crowd. Okay. So Team Munster, you came into this final round with five points, and you leave this final round with five points. <laughs> Team Leinster, you came into this final round with six points, a 5 nil whitewash, you will leave with 11 points. <laughs> Leinster win in Limerick. No. Evan, congratulations. 19 years of age, you've won two tickets to go see Munster Gloucester at Tolman Park next weekend. You'll get a free match behind the scenes stadium tour. You'll also present the match day coin to the referee and both captains in the tunnel for the pre match coin toss. Evan just told me he's actually working at the game. What are you doing at the game? I supervise all the program centers. <laughs> <laughs> can you get Brilliant. somebody from Munster Rugby will get you the day off and you can go and enjoy it as a proper <laughs> supporter? <laughs> That is pretty much us done for tonight. My thanks to everybody who helped make tonight happen, especially our friends at Heineken Rugby Club. A big thank you to the University Concert Hall for the run of this place, a brilliant venue. My beautiful co-host, Brian O'Driscoll. Keith Wood. Ronan O'Gara. And of course to you, our amazing audience, who braved the weather conditions. Get home safely, go home quickly. Thanks a million for coming tonight. Up next, John Giles and the football show. Good luck. Off the ball on News Talk. Down to business. This Saturday I'll be straight into studio having spent the night outdoors for the annual